This morning we're going to go out and we're going to core uh, a low elevation marsh here at Humboldt Bay. At this point we're studying it to understand uh, its dynamics, how, how fast it's growing in terms of its elevation, how sensitive it will be to future sea level rise due to climate change. One, two, three. That's it. And then how it's reacted and responded to disturbances such as flood events uh, or uh, large scale tsunamis. Cores will be anywhere from about three to about six feet in length, and they'll give us, in a sense, the geological and environmental history of this uh, of this this very very large and important California marsh complex. So we've probably got this invasive Spartina, yeah, um, down to about 33 centimeters, where you start to get fill. So this is it's a really dynamic landscape. It's it's changed a lot in the past, and definitely going to change again in the future. Typically with these lakes, the ice is retreated, you have these residual, you know, huge chunks of ice in a sense, if you want to call it that, of decaying ice. And as they decay, they drop their sediment load as it melts out, and finally they leave a depression. They can also give you a lot of sediment. If you look at the, the topography around this thing, it could have been much, much deeper in the past. And then now it's two meters, so it's, it could be filled up with maybe five meters of sediment or more. But it's a, this would be a classic lake like you would core all over the world in glaciated regions. And you typically get a nice record here. You can see it's got nice green organic sediment. There's macrofossils in it. We have a little uh, more compact. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, and there's a dark layer there. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> this yeah, beats the other lakes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're doing a project here, again, on climate change. And in this case, we're looking at climate change in the context of longer-term natural climate variability over the last, oh, 2,000 years or so, in a part of the world here that is extremely sensitive, sensitive to drought. It's sensitive to the impacts of uh, warming on its forests, on its alpine vegetation. And we think also that in the past, the pre-European past, that the native peoples here but were very, very sensitive to climate, natural climate variation. And maybe now it's kind of wetter and gross. Yeah. And so we're doing a study here that's looking at the impact of past climate change and future climate change on the magnificent forest and alpine systems that we have here in, uh, in Utah, in the mountains of Utah. And we're also looking at societal response, how past societies such as the Fremont agricultural people here responded to those climate changes. And so, in a way, from 10,000 feet here in Cedar Breaks to sea level in Humboldt, these studies meld together. Uh, into, uh, into a consistent whole looking at climate change and, and the western United States. So this is going to be something fun to work on in the lab for the next little while because we were uh, no way expecting to hit peat. No. That was completely, we haven't seen anything of modern bog like this in this whole region, any place. Yeah. Perfect.